in Proverbs chapter 6, the Bible tells us how much God hates lying. Proverbs 6, 16, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Abomination is strong language. It's, it's a strong, utter hatred. Uh, it says, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. That's why the Bible says six things that the Lord hates, seven are an abomination unto him. It lists seven things. Lying's mentioned twice. Two times. And just as much as God is true and God gives us the truth and God gives us, God goes through efforts to make sure that his word is preserved and that we can have his word. And when God makes a promise, he is sure to make sure it comes to pass and that we can rely on him as being faithful. So if God says you have eternal life, you have no reason to doubt about that. On the flip side, what we should be able to do, we should have our word matter as well. That's why in God's commandments, he tells us that when you vow a vow, defer not to pay it. When you say something, when you make a statement, when you make a claim, hey, that ought to mean something to you. Don't be one of these people that just rattles off the mouth and your words don't really mean anything. We have a God whose words, every single word that comes out of God's mouth matters and is true, and is right, and can never fail. It's never contradictory. Look, we're not perfect, but we really ought to do a much better job of making sure that the words that we speak can be relied on, can be viewed as faithful, can be true. That if someone were to come to us and say, well, I heard you say this, and I heard you say that, you ought to be able to stand by that. And that means you have to be very careful with the words that you say and how many words you say. The Bible says that a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Where, uh, in a multitude of words, there lacketh not, there wanteth not sin. It's real easy to start saying things that are not true and just start repeating things that aren't true, even if you don't know, but you're just, well, this is what I heard. And you start repeating things. That's not how God is. God doesn't just repeat things. Of course, God is the source of all truth and wisdom and knowledge, but we need to be careful. If we're going to try to be true and faithful as Jesus is true and faithful, that we are very careful with our words and we treat our words uh, with respect. You know, there used to be, not even that long ago, a generation of people when you made an agreement, right? It was on your word. And you could have a handshake. You could tell someone you're good for something. It would be on your word. And people had respect to that because in general, the society had much more respect to what you said and who, because who you are is tied in to your word. Just as much, I mean, think about how much Jesus Christ is tied into being the word, the word of God. We ought to have that same level of respect and recognition when someone says something. But these days, because people are so, just so easy to lie, it's like now you've got all these big contracts and you've got to sign all this stuff. Now, when you sign, it's still, I mean, it's still basically your word that you're signing on there, too. When you, when you enter into an agreement and a contract with someone, you know, you're signing this off. But now they need that physical proof because people become so much liars. Oh, no, I didn't agree to that. You know, it's like, well, now we've got to have this. Instead of having the integrity of just being able to say, yes, sir, nope, that, you know, I'm good for that. And, and you can hold me to that. And you will not allow that to fail because your word is on the line. Your character is on the line. Very important attribute being true.